Hello, my beautiful friends. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Stephanie, and I do appreciate you taking some time to be here. I appreciate your spirit and your smile and your laugh. I just am so grateful that you're here with me. We are getting through this together, one day at a time. We've made it this far. We just keep coming together and moving forward because that is absolutely what we're here to do. Ordinarily, before these talks, I don't have a lot of requirements and I certainly don't usually make requests, but today I do have one small request for you. If you could just get a piece of paper, it doesn't have to be a full sheet, you get a half sheet, a napkin, whatever it is. You'll just have a piece of paper handy. We'll be using that a little bit later towards the end of the talk. Also remember that after the talk, I'll be leading you through a short meditation so you'll definitely want to stay around for that too. So here we are, and times continue to be challenging and unique and unprecedented, and certainly filled with opportunities to practice our spiritual principles. But one thing that I thought I'd like to share with you today is how we can learn to overcome fear so that we can see and experience the life of joy and peace that we are truly created to have. So that we can remember the beautiful beings of light that we are truly meant to be. But it is so hard sometimes when there are demands and there are uncertainties and there are so many unknowns. Maybe you're not sure what's going to happen with your job or with school or with health. There are so many things that can challenge our faith and can truly test our spiritual limits. Fear is running rampant in so many ways right now. And yet, we are here together and you are an incredible, powerful spirit. You do not have to succumb to this fear. I want to share with you how you can push past. So the first step in moving through fear is to give a big old huff. <sighs> okay, if you're a teenager, you probably know the huff. It's the emotions, it's the frustration, because we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And part of being a human is feeling frustrated. It's feeling sad. It's hurting and grieving and sometimes being angry because things can feel so tough and sometimes things don't go the way we think they're supposed to. And I think sometimes as spiritual students, we have this false notion that because we go to this church or because we practice this spiritual belief system, we shouldn't feel negative emotions. We should always be positive. And things should always be light. We should always have faith. And although we strive for that, and that is certainly what we are here to work towards, some days are tough. And some days you may just need to cry. And sometimes you might want to just hide. That's okay. It's part of our humanity. It's part of what can inspire us. But it's part of this gift of life here on planet Earth. Your emotions are okay. And it is easy sometimes to judge emotions. These are good emotions and these are bad emotions. But the truth is emotions are just emotions. They're information. Some information is uncomfortable as some emotions are challenging. Some information is great, just like some emotions feel really good. But emotions are simply information that can help us understand our relationship with our spirit, how our humanity is interfacing with that spirit that we are. Emotions are all right. I think it's also common in spiritual circles to have this idea, and I think it maybe comes from the law of attraction or other beliefs that whatever we think about, we bring about, or if we focus on something, we multiply it. So we have a real tendency to sort of catch ourselves. <gasps> I felt frustrated. I better not feel frustrated because then I'll get more frustration. Or, oh my gosh, I was afraid. Does this mean that I'm going to create more fear? And it simply doesn't work like that. If you have a fear, recognize you're afraid. It's okay. If you're anxious, acknowledge you're anxious. It's okay. One of my 
favorite verses in the Bible when I was young comes from the New Testament and the verse is Jesus wept. Okay, so I admit part of why I really liked that was because it was so short and easy to memorize, but other than that, it's a beautiful verse. Because here's Jesus, a way shower, a, a teacher, a master, fully aligned with his divinity, but also very in tune with his humanity. Jesus wept because his dear friend had died, and he was not there at the time. He felt the grief. He felt sadness. He felt that, and he wept. It's okay to weep. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to cry. And it's also okay to laugh and to feel good. I just want you to know that whatever your emotions are, they're your humanity. They're your emotions. So don't try to talk yourself out or restrict yourself. Emotions are part of who you are, a beautiful part, a, a real honest part of who you are. So the first step when it comes to moving through fear is to acknowledge you feel how you feel and to just give a big old huff. Over the past couple of months, I'll tell you, I've huffed a lot because there's been a lot of feelings going on, but we get through it by acknowledging it and seeing it for what it is. <sighs> Some days are tough. So after we've acknowledged that and recognized our humanity and accepted that, well, then we need to take another step. Because, yeah, we have a lot of emotions, but if we just stay caught in these emotions and caught in these emotions and caught in these emotions, it, we can never move forward because we just get stuck in all those feelings and that can become also unhealthy and unbalanced. So after we've recognized that we have these feelings and we feel the way we do, we have to get these emotions out. That is the puff. <sighs> Okay, now I've huffed, now let me get this out and call it what it is. When we recognize our emotions, when we can express those by talking to friends, maybe through journaling, maybe by taking a walk and being with the trees, but when we can get these emotions out, we begin to have access to our true, genuine power. Remember how I said that you're a spirit having a human experience? The human experience is the emotions. The spirit is using those emotions to take inspired action to live this life of love and freedom that you are here for. So you take these emotions and you look at them and you say, this may be what I feel, but this is not who I am. You are not the sum and parts of your emotions. Your emotions are, you, are experiences that you have, but they are not you. You experience fear, but you are not fear. You are a child of love. You may experience anxiety, but you are not that anxiety. You are connected to hope and faith that can move mountains. So you have these emotions, but they are not who you are. Yet when we can get them out, we begin to see more clearly. I want to take this action because this doesn't feel comfortable for me. I want to do more of this because I love the feeling of joy that comes to me. So emotions give us the fuel to act in alignment with our highest good and with our soul's truth. So we can write them down, we can talk to a friend, but get these emotions out release them so you can use that energy to take inspired action. Remember who you are. So once we acknowledge our emotions, then we can recognize and see them to make choices. I think getting emotions out is also very important and especially now, maybe more than ever, because the things we keep inside us tend to grow. So if you have some fear and you keep it stuck, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until you become paralyzed because there's simply just so much fear inside. You might remember when you were a kid being afraid of something in the closet or maybe thinking that there was a monster under the bed. And if you sit there hiding in the dark, the monster, for some reason, 
gets bigger, scarier, uglier, hairier, and it sprouts more teeth. But the moment you turn the light on and look, the minute you see, you discover, oh, it's all right. There's really nothing to be afraid of. But you have to acknowledge the fear was there before you can take the action to turn on the light and to see there's nothing to be afraid of. So when we get these emotions out, we start to deflate the intensity. We can take these mountains of anxiety and uncertainty and, take, and turn them into molehills. Don't let the emotions stay stuck inside. <sighs> Huff because you're frustration, frustrated, but puff and get it out. So that's easy enough to do. Now, what I'd like you to do is to get your paper. So just because it's nice, let's give another huff. huff. All right. Now, I want you to think about the things that maybe have bothered you. Think of the things that you're afraid of any anxieties that you might have, any emotions that are uncomfortable or unwanted or that you no longer want to contain you. Maybe it's memories of the past or maybe it's anxieties that you've held on to. Maybe it's some depression, whatever it is, the things that you no longer want, the ties that no longer have the right to bind you, the anxieties and uncertainties that have limited you for far too long. I want you to take those now you don't even have to write them down. I want you to hold your paper and I want you just to imagine all those emotions right there in front of you, right there on the paper. You just see them there and if you want you can take a moment to write a few things down. Just put all that into the paper and then just look at that. <sighs> there it is. Now what I want you to do figure this out. I want you to crumple that up. So we've recognized our emotions. Then we've released them so that we can have the energy that we need to make inspired choices. We've huffed and we've puffed. Now it's time to blow the fear down. There it goes. So sometimes it feels really good to take all that and just blow it down. Because do you know what happens when you push that fear aside? When just like the big bad wolf, when you blow all that, then suddenly a new path opens up. There's something there that you didn't see before because fear was causing it to be hidden. You couldn't see it because all the stuff that was obscuring your vision from the inside. When we can push through that fear, a new path opens up. Now, it doesn't mean that the entire path all the way to the destination opens up. It just means the next right step opens up for you. And then the next step, and the next step. And then maybe there's fear again. So you need to huff and puff and blow that fear down because beyond that is another step. I promise you that beyond the fear, there is light. That past that anxiety, there is certainty. Beneath the doubt, there is faith. If you can push through those emotions, if you can blow that down with the breath of life, with the surrender to spirit, with releasing what no longer serves you, you will see a way. Maybe it's not a neat and tidy way, but there is a way. And you'll find it when you push past this fear and let all that stuff out. And it feels good sometimes to kind of be confident like the big bad wolf. We all need a little bit of that energy now and again. So remember, honor your humanity and the emotions that you have because it's such an important and vital part of who you are. And then release those emotions so that you can use those to create, to inspire, to reach out, to connect, to move, to let go whatever it is that you need to do. 
and then use that power, that breath, whew, blow away that fear so that you can see the life of peace, the life of love, the path to joy and health and happiness that spirit truly has designed for you. Thank you for joining me today. I want to see some huffing and puffing and blowing some fear away. It's easy to remember, it's easy to do, and it feels so good to deflate all that anxiety and uncertainty because the fear can get pretty big in this world right now. But when you know that you can choose to move past that, when you are loved and supported in moving through that, you truly can move mountains and you can see a whole new light, a whole new life that is waiting right there past the fear for you. Thank you. I love you and I appreciate you. Ah, let's just take a moment now. So we'll have a few minutes now to go through our meditation. Hope you feel energized and excited and ready to take on this new life that you're intended for. So as we prepare now for the meditation, just want you to savor that feeling of love and that feeling of connection. And then if it's comfortable for you, just go ahead and close your eyes. Whatever is out there in the world, it'll still be there in just a bit. But right now, the most important thing is connecting with the spirit of love and peace and joy that's right there on the inside. So I want you to take a breath. And as you do so, just go ahead and relax your shoulders. Soften your jaw. Just take a minute to let everything settle down. This moment, this now moment, is your true and right place. You are exactly where you need to be right now. Let everything soften. As you take another breath, just slowly, slowly let that out. Just for a moment, over these next few moments, allow your words, your thoughts to be focused right here, right now. So what I'd like to ask you to do is to imagine yourself standing outside it's a bright day blue sky some clouds As you look up, you can see the birds. The light is so nice and so warm. And you decide that you'd like to look forward to see what's right there in front of you. You look down and you can see that there's grass. 
But as you look forward, you see bricks and hedges and so many things that have grown up obscuring your vision so you're not quite certain where you are. And yet, you know that beyond that thicket, beyond that overgrowth, beyond their stones, there's something, something that awaits you. And the thicket and the obstruction is so high and so dense, you know that you can't climb over it. It stretches out on both sides, so you couldn't walk around it. There's no way you could go under it. And yet you know that there's something beyond. And in that moment, now, as you look at all that before you, you simply take a breath and then exhale and release. And as you do that, suddenly, path emerges as the brush and the overgrowth, the brambles and the branches part. And you step forward and a path opens up. With each step you take, you see a little more light. So the blue sky is matched by a beautiful, lush green field that comes into view as you move through these thickets, brushing all that aside. And now, all that is behind you. The stones and the growth, the thorns, the fear, it's all behind you now. Because as you look forward, you see trees and butterflies, flowers, the gentle breeze, the scent of jasmine, peace, peace. And you know that this place has been created for you. It's been grown for you, nurtured for you, made for you because you are worthy you are created for love all this is yours let's now take a moment just to bask in that feeling of light to soak up the beauty of the earth, to be one with all of life, and to be loved because you are.
you are loved. This place will always be here for you. Spirit is always present within you. Love is the true essence of you. It is who you are. And then very slowly, very slow, want you to wiggle your toes a little bit, bring your attention back to the space where you are, relax your shoulders, just be gentle, be gentle with yourself. You are a wonderful and beautiful child of love. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Welcome home. Again, I am so glad that you joined me today. I want you to blow past fear, to go big bad wolf, and to remember the beautiful and incredible light of spirit that you are. I love you. Namaste.